Hallelujah. God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God? Come on, I know you can do a better job than that. God's been good to you. He blessed us with a, another week, with another month. Well, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. We're so grateful that you came to worship with us here at Mount Zion on this Sunday morning. I believe that God has a word for you, a life-changing word. I believe that God has a blessing with your name on it. Well, how many of you can say, like I can say, on a Sunday morning that all things are possible with our God? All things are possible with our God. If there's one thing to always remember, it's that all things are possible with our God. But pastor, you don't know what the, God, what the doctor said. All things are possible with our God. You don't know what my situation is, pastor. All things are possible with my God. You don't know what I'm dealing with this week. You don't know how they're treating me at work. You don't know what I'm up against. I don't know. But what I do know is all things are possible with our God. Do I have a witness in the house of God on a Sunday morning? It's good to know whatever you're dealing with, all things are possible. There's a scripture I want to start us off with as we begin this worship experience this morning. And it says this in Psalm, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. This morning, I want to encourage you. Don't focus on what your circumstances have to offer you. Focus on what God has to offer you today. Because your circumstances may have to offer you some things that'll be difficult, right, in life. But let me tell you something. God can offer something so much greater. God can take you to another level. God has blessings. He has healing power on the inside of him. He has new mercies every single morning. So I believe and declare that God is going to do a new thing in your life. I believe that you're going to receive a life-changing word this morning. And I believe that as you walk out that door after this service today, after praising God and hearing the word and proclaiming the word and believing in the word, that you will never be the same. That God is going to take you out of here on a higher level. How many of you believe and receive that this morning? One last psalm that I love, it says this. It says, God has blessings stored up for the righteous. Think about that. God has blessings that are stored up for the righteous. That means those blessings are waiting on you. You said they're waiting on me. They're waiting on me to do what? To believe and declare that all things are possible with our God. When the praises go up. Come on, praise team. Lead us this morning. Give God praise all around the sanctuary.
on your feet and give God a great big hand praise. Oh, give God a great big hand praise. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to hold on. And when you hold on, you got to hold out. The Bible says, weeping men do it for a night. But hold out. Joy coming in the morning. If you hold out, you tell your family, I'm just holding out. And I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Give God some praise in the house. Turn to your neighbor and just give them a high five or look at them and just tell them, hold out. Amen. You got to hold out. Hold on. The Bible says, and be of good courage, and he will strengthen my heart. Hold out. Hold out. Can you just turn to five people and tell them, hold out? You know, when we come to church, you never know what people are going through. Bring it down. You never know what people are going through. You never know who's been sick all week. You never know who's been depressed all week. You never know who's been lonely all week. You never know who's got to go to the doctor. You never know what the doctor have already told somebody in the house. And so you've got to just learn how to hold out. Hold on and be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. We're going to invite you to the altar. We want you to come to the altar for you. We're praying. This is prayer time. After what I saw last week, I told the church this morning, I have never seen nothing like that in my life. President having a felony. And then a man sits up and tells so much stuff the next day. This is his reality. It's a messed up reality, and a lot of people are buying that reality. In my days, if you told something like that, you get beat up for it because they knew it was untruth. This is dangerous and sad what is going on right now in this nation. But we've got to pray, fast and pray. And believe that God can do what no other power on earth can do. Pray. Jesus goes up into the high mountain. And when he goes up into the high mountain, there is a father with his son down at the bottom of the mountain having problems. He comes down there. And the disciples could not pull this demon out of this boy. And later on, they asked Jesus, why not? Why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we perform the miracle? Why couldn't we perform the difference in this child's life? And Jesus said, these things come by prayer and fasting. If there's ever time we need to be fasting. I listened to that particular brother that made those statements after he was indicted, what, 32 times? 42? No, it wasn't. Add it up, and you got about 80 of them. It's terrible. But we're not going to let that, we're not going to highlight that because there's another former president who is in bereavement right now with his wife. Barack Obama lost, President Barack Obama lost his mother in law on Friday. Michelle lost her mother. Michelle says that her mother was the anchor of her very existence and soul. And during those eight years in the White House, there was this little lady who was there with her grandchildren and her daughter and her son-in-law trying to raise these two children. Can you bow your heads and pray for First Lady Michelle Obama? Pray for President Barack Obama. Pray for their two children. Her mother was named Marion Robinson. She has died at the young age of 86 years old. Miss Robinson was born in Chicago in 1937 and grew up in the city south side of Chicago. When she raised her daughter and son, Craig Robinson, 
She was married to Frazier Robinson, who died in 1991 from multiple sclerosis. She, pa she passed peace peacefully on Friday, said the family. And right now, the family says, none of us are quite sure how exactly we move on without her. Ms. Robinson became known to Americans as the nation's first grandmother after her son-in-law, Barack Obama, won the 2008 presidential election. She was a fixture, said the family, in the White House during his eight years in office. Though she kept a low profile, she attended holiday events, an occasional overseas trip and concerts in the East Room, but most often she was with her granddaughter, Sasha and Malia. Malia. Have, Malia. Having lived in Chicago her entire life, Mrs. Robinson agreed to move to Washington, D.C. in 2009 to live in the White House resident and help take care of her granddaughters who were seven and 10 years of age. She said these words, I felt like this was going to be a very hard life for all of them. And I was worried about my family's safety. And I was worried about my grandkids. And that's what got me to move to DC. President Obama and Michelle said we needed her. The girls needed her. And she ended up being our rock through it all. Mrs. Obama said her mother relished her role as a grandmother. And although she enforced whatever household rules that were set for bedtime, watching TV or eating candy, she made it clear that she sided with her grandbabies in thinking that her parents was just a little bit too strict. And so our prayers go out to Michelle and Barack Obama, Craig Robinson and his wife Kelly, and her grandchildren, Avery, Leslie, Malia, Sasha, Austin, and Aaron. As we bow our heads in a word of prayer, we're praying right now for them. Come on, talk to God out loud for them. Say it, choir. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, yes, yes. Until I lay my head, oh, yeah, yeah. oh I will sing oh, yeah. of the goodness yeah. of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Yes. And all my Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for all of the miracles and miraculous things that you do in our lives. We confess, God, that we have not been all that we should have been. We should have been even more faithful and trusting of you. God, we're living in dark days and dark times. We're living in a time where we're not sure what is going on, even in the atmosphere. But we believe that you sit high and look low and you can guide our feet wherever we go. God, we're praying for our president and we're praying for Michelle and Barack, and we're praying for their family right now that you will give them the peace that will pass all understanding. Remind them that absent from the body is always present with the Lord and that you send angels to us. And so often we entertain angels day by day, unaware that they were in fact angels. So now God give that family the strength to move on and to continue the ways and the teachings of this marvelous grandmother who passed this way for 86 years. God, right now, we're praying for our nation. We know that there's darkness hoovering all over us, but we know that you're still in charge. And we're asking you to step in, not only on time, but in your own way. And we believe that you can move this nation to higher heights, and she can 
be the great nation that she's been called to. We pray for those around the altar right now, whatever they're going through, we're believing in the name of Jesus, that they will be healed, that they will be touched, that they will be delivered, that you will provide for them as you've always provided for them in the past. Bless this church and its ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God shouted, amen. Give God a great big hand praise, y'all. Turn to your neighbor, wave at him. It's just to say, it's going to be all right. Thank you, choir. What a marvelous, marvelous day it has been. Amen. We're going to ask our technicians to come and give us our announcements even now. Amen. Yeah, give somebody a holy hug. All of our student ministries are dismissed at this time. Kids K through 6 can exit to the right of the stage, and all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. This season, we have some things we don't want you to miss. Bible study is essential to spiritual growth. First of all, we have a live and online Bible study on Tuesdays at noon with Pastor Larry. There is also women's and men's Bible study, Sundays at 1015 a.m. in the educational wing. We are continuing to serve our community. In the winter, we began summer basketball leagues in our multi-purpose dream center. In the spring, we just partnered with our local schools in Bedford who are now holding classes for children with autism daily in our educational wing. Our food pantry serves families every Sunday and we are collecting ties for young men who are looking to go on job interviews. We are also hosting community yoga weekly on Wednesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. All of this is a part of our vision to spread love to the community and be a safe place for people to socialize and feel the love of Jesus. With all this activity in our facilities, we are in need of volunteers to help with repairs. We also will be needing extra funds for the maintenance of our church. We are asking you who are willing to bless God's house with a special offering this spring to give $50 to $100 above and beyond your regular giving. Our major goal is to raise $200,000 above our normal operating income. If you want to give a bigger gift and serve a bigger purpose, call the church. All right, well, a pastor friend of mine described church this way. He said, church is not an organization you join. It's a family where you belong, a home where you are loved, and a hospital where you find healing. I'm Pastor Dan, and I'm excited to take the next few moments to introducing you to this very special place God has blessed us with. That is giving. We ask all to participate in our giving system. Uh, we've all heard the scripture, maybe you have, uh, for God loves a cheerful giver. Um, another translation says a hilarious giver. Um, I like to simply say uh, when it comes to giving, all powers in the world have people that support them. Uh, political world have people that support them. Those in the entertainment world have people that support them. We are able to do what we do because we have people who are passionate in supporting the ministry, in supporting the work of God, in supporting the outreach efforts that we do here at Mount Zion. You can give in various ways. We have an envelope system, of course. We have the Givelify app. You can download the Givelify app and find us on that app um, on your iOS or Android phones. And then text to give. We have a number that you could just text and give right through that. That's one of my favorite. And of course, you can visit us online at mzov.org to give through our website. This is one I shouldn't have to tell, tell you, but a lot of people don't do it. Carry your Bibles. We encourage all to purchase and bring Bibles to church. The phone is nice, don't get me wrong, Amen. but it's nothing like having your focus yes. uh, during service without distraction by having the Word of God. Now, at Mount Zion, we are fans of the Bible apps. If you look at Pastor Preach It, he all, he's oftentimes on his phone utilizing Bible apps to jump from different versions of the Bible. We encourage that. We encourage all to use that. We have some great recommendations for you as well. And while you have your phone out, make sure you take some pictures and videos and share your experience at Mount Zion on social media. We want the world to see all the great things that are happening 
within our church. Just beware of any added distractions from phone usage during our service times. God bless you. Thank you. Take care. Amen. Graduation Sunday is coming up on June 9th at 11 a.m. It's our time where the church recognizes all of our graduates from two and four year colleges and all technical schools or certificate programs. If you or someone in your family is graduating, make sure they register in the church foyer or call the church to be recognized. Also, this year is the first year of Mount Zion University, our new Bible college. And on this date, we will also be recognizing our first year graduates. Don't miss it. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that is doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12 as we stand at the attention of God, thanking God for all that he's done for us even on today. I'm going to ask again if for those that are watching online and even those in the parking lot, if you will follow along with us. We thank you again for giving. You can use the Givelify app or mzov.org or even our text to give or even you can give through Cash App to all of those that are watching us online. I'm going to ask, are there any givers in the house? Just say amen. 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 As we give today, let's read this text responsibly. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Will you bow your heads in a moment of thanks, in a moment of thoughtfulness, thinking unto God, thanking God for all that he's done for us. As we tithe today, know that tithing is an act of worship. Can somebody say the word worship? It's an expression of the heart that we trust God with our finances. We give God, as the Bible teaches, our first fruits, the best off the, off the top that we have set aside to give unto God. And it doesn't matter how our financial situation ebbs and flows, we know at the end of the day that God will provide. God will provide for your needs. Is there anybody in this place that believes and knows and seen it in their life what God has provided? Come on, give God some praise in this place. So the Bible says we don't have to give grudgingly. We don't have to give out of compulsion because we know and believe that God loves a cheerful giver. But we can know and believe that God is going to take care of our needs. When we take care of God's house, when we take care of the things that God asks us to take for, God always will take care of us. And so will you just take a quick moment before we go into the prayer to thank God for taking care of you? Many times we focus on what we don't have, but thank God for the things that you do have. Thank God for what God has done in your life. Yes, this is the moment to say, Lord, you've been so good. All this week I focused on what I wanted, but I've now realized that you supplied my every need. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We lift you up today. Bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. Father, we have a vision here at this church. We have so many wonderful things that we're able to do because of the faithful people of God. I pray right now that you would bless the giver right now in a mighty and powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are given a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. Also for communion, you can come forward right now and take your communion. Press down, shaking together, and running over.
let us all stand together and lift our hands up in the air and say all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All the people of God said, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. and opening up our receptacle, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. No condemnation. As we bow our heads in the word of thanks unto God, remembering that day to which Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sin, he paid the supreme price that we might have a right to the tree of life. Jesus. After the flesh, no condemnation. Those who are in on the night in which he was betrayed, it was an awesome, sad night. It was a night with his disciples. He wanted to spend that time with his disciples. And whether you know it or not, we are now his disciples. And he wants to spend time with us. And we want he wants us to spend time with him. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you do not have a relationship with God. Because the Bible says there is only one in-betweener, a mediator between man, God, God, and man. And that is the man, Christ Christ. Jesus. What the Lord wants from you more than anything else, more even than your own sins, because he has taken care of that. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to wake up in the morning and he does not want to be the last thing on your to-do list to thank him, but rather he wants you to wake up in the morning and he becomes your first thing to do is to say thank you. I wake up in the morning, but before I go wake up in the morning, the night before, I always say to God, God, I want to wake up tomorrow in the land of the living. And when I wake up, I say thank you. We take our days for granted. He wants us to walk with him during the afternoon and instead of having a lunch break, have a praise break. Sometimes I even dance for him, for the things that he does for me. Some people would think I'm crazy. I just start to dance and in my own way and say, God, God, you've been really good. So I want a relationship. Say relationship. I don't want to wait till I get to heaven to decide that I want a relationship with him. I want it right now. And if you're here today and you don't have it, before that sermon is finished, I want you to make sure you have the right relationship with God. And let me tell you, this is not the time to be playing with God. This is not the time not to have a relationship with God because you're going to need him more than you ever think with what is going on around us. And so at the table, he took the common loaf of bread. He blessed it. He gave it to them and said, as often as you do this, do it in the remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And there on the table was the fruit of the vine that represented his his blood, his sinless blood, and he's going to do a transfusion for us on Calvary. He is going to exchange our tainted blood for his untainted blood, that we might have a right to go back into the place that Adam and Eve left out of, the garden and the paradise place. So he took the fruit of the vine, he blessed it, he gave it to them, said, as often as you do this, do it in the remembrance of me. God bless this fruit of the vine that represents your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people said, amen. Let us drink together. And all the people of God said, amen. And all the people of God said, amen again. Can you give God a great big thank you? Can you say 
Hallelujah. Can you say, I'm so grateful. Amen. As you go to your seat, amen. Uh, ushers are coming around now to get your receptacle. How proud and happy I am to have one of my greatest mentors in the entire nation. Some of y'all know who he is. He is the pastor emeritus of the Olivet Institutional Baptist Church, but he's bigger than that. He's the former co-pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, where he was the only co-pastor who co-pastored with Daddy King and was walking with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But he's bigger than that. He's been at the cathedral in Washington where he prayed for presidents and nations. But he's bigger than that. He was a pastor of a great church that was named after our church, the Mount Zion Church in, uh, in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, I think. Is that right? But he's greater than that. He is a child of God. That's what made Dr. Otis Moss, Jr., I never will forget me. I'm meeting him. I never will forget the time that he came to my class. Some of you have known that I've taught at the Cleveland State University for many years. And Dr. Moss would show up and show out. And he told me some stuff that I didn't give him credit for. He told me about Auburn Avenue, and I walked Auburn Avenue in my, my book entitled God, Doing God's Will. I didn't give him credit because, you know, you don't have to give him credit. You're just going to rework, rework the words. But I'm giving him credit for it right now. Thank you, Dr. Moss, for all the things you've done. Let's give Dr. Moss a great big hand. Would you lift up your right hand and say, Dr. Moss, great civil rights leader, church leader, God spokesperson. Speak to us. Let go. Let God say, we got your back. But we also have a lot of prayer with us. Amen. Give Dr. Moss a great big hand praise. Stand on your feet for Dr. Otis Moss, Jr. meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer my rock and my salvation in the name of our Lord in the name of our Redeemer, in the name of our Liberator, Jesus the Christ. Amen. To our abiding friend and leader of this congregation, Pastor, national and internationally, our friend Dr. Larry Macon and Pastors Macon with him. First Lady Macon. God bless the Macon family and the Mount Zion family. To my beloved wife, Edwina, in a few days, 58 years, Thank you 
thank you for praying with me and smiling and laughing with me and sometimes laughing at me. God bless you as a mother of our beloved children and friend to so many. We met in the human rights struggle. Some of you know that Dr. King performed our wedding ceremony along with my major professor and we have been walking and praying and serving together for these 50 plus almost eight years. Thank you, Dr. Macon, for your kindness, for your leadership. You have taken a village parish and led into a, a global ministry, Mount Zion. Mount Zion Baptist Church, Pentecostal in fervor, holiness in witness, evangelistic in outreach, and liberationist in detail. Let the church say amen. It is an honor to be with you on this day or any day. And congratulations, Bishop Macon, on your latest book. And thank you for the autographed copy you placed in my hands this morning. Uh, thanks to you, uh, Brother Reed, for your hospitality, and thank you for giving to us the comfort of bringing us here this morning. My wife was much more comfortable with you driving than she is with my driving, especially at 89. God bless Mount Zion. There is a scripture, Psalm 139, and I invite you to examine those two verses, not only this morning, but in the days and weeks and the years to come. Psalm 139, verses 11 and 12. One translation reads this way, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness, amen. <laughs> the darkness and the light are both alike unto thee. Think about this uh, for a few minutes this morning and for the rest of the week and perhaps for the rest of your days. With God, there is always 
light. With God, there is always light. Look at your neighbor sitting near to you and say, neighbor, my friend, wherever you go, whatever the circumstances, always remember, with God, there is always light. Amen. You know, uh, life is, is filled with many experiences of light and darkness. And I want to lift up just a few of those experiences and take my seat. Uh, there, there, there is sunlight. Some people are born in the sunlight of God's grace and goodness. Sunlight. Sunlight when, when privilege and opportunity and comfort are, are all present. Sunlight. When things seem so uh, blessed and opportunities are raining down upon us, sunlight. Some people are born in, in the sunlight of privilege, opportunity, comfort, and uh, Gifts beyond our imagination, sunlight. Some, 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 some people are born in, in the sunlight of God's grace. However, we must never forget that in this sunlight of experience, agony and Tragedy are always nearby. Uh, we could we 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 could lift up the fact that uh, the Kennedys were born in the sunlight of prosperity and opportunity. So was Roosevelt and many others we could name. But that sunlight of opportunity and privilege did not keep Roosevelt from paralysis and living out his life starting as a young man in a wheelchair. And that sunlight of privilege and aristocracy of wealth did not keep Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and Robert Kennedy from the assassin's bullet. So even when we are born in the sunlight of privilege and opportunity, or even wealth, there are always tragic experiences knocking at our door. So, if you have great privilege, great opportunity, if you've inherited wealth, if you have a good job and good health, in the sunlight of God's grace, remember that tragedy is always near. Therefore, we need to experience and see and feel and grasp the light of God 
above and beyond the sunlight of wealth and commodities. Some people are born in the sunlight, but even in sunlight, tragedy is not far away. Uh, but not only that, uh, some people are born in the moonlight. If you, if you grew up in the country like I did in the rural area, you have deep appreciation for moonlight. Moonlight, moonlight is, you know, some people did their planting and their planting by moonlight. And, 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 and some people know about the romance of moonlight. It inspires people to sing songs and write poetry and laugh and reach out and embrace each other. Never, never, never take sunlight for granted and never curse the moonlight. Uh, to be able to live uh, and experience uh, romance in the moonlight. Uh, some people are right now, you are remembering moonlight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes you didn't always have permission. Uh, but you, 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 you remember those days of, you know, outdoor theater. When you went to the movie, the outdoor movie, and you never saw the movie. Uh, I'll, I'll pause there. Uh, some people enjoy moonlight. And that's, that, 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 that's wonderful. However... There are moments in our existence when there is no sunlight and there is no moonlight. And, and you travel by starlight. My, my, my. The starlight of dreams and hopes and aspiration. And... Uh, Remember, remember the scripture that even the night shall be light about me. If there is no sunlight, there is moonlight. And, and if there is no moonlight, there, 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 there is starlight. Even the night shall be light. About me. And then there are times, there, 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 there are times when there is no sunlight and there is no moonlight. But if you had grown up in my territory, there, uh, you, you, you know something about candlelight. When the sun is not shining and the moon is not beaming, but there is star. Even the night shall be light about me. And, 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 and you know, there are times when, when there is no sunlight and there is no moonlight and, and, and you cannot see the stars. My, my. But you, you can carry you can carry a candle. You can have candle light. Candle light. However, you know, uh, there are moments in life when you don't see the sun, when you don't see the moon, when you don't see the stars and you don't have a candle. No sunlight, no moonlight, no starlight, no candlelight. 
What are you going to do? The sun is not shining. The moon is not beaming. The stars are not glittering. And the candle is not burning. Where will the light That's when you need faith light. Even the night shall be light about me. So on this journey of life, when the lights go out, when you can't see the sun, when the moon is not beaming, when the stars are not glittering and your candle has burned out, you need something to give you light. Faith, the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith. Faith means to be able to feel the warmth of spring on winter's coldest night. Faith. Faith is to see the flower bloom before the seed is planted. Faith is to hear the bird sing before the egg is hatched. Faith is to be able to see the butterfly flying while the caterpillar is still crawling. Faith, the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So, when you walk by faith, can't see the sun walk on. When you walk by faith and the moon is not beaming, walk on. When you walk by faith and the stars are not glittering, walk on. You ought to have a song that you can sing. In the darkest of the night. There ought to be a song you can sing. I know the Lord will make a way. And, and as I take my seat, I've had uh, a few starless nights in my own life when the candle was not burning, the stars were not glittering, and the moon was not beaming, and the sun was not shining. I was born in the midst of the Great Depression, 1935. But somehow, the Lord gave us light. When I was four years old, our mother died at the age of 36, and our father became a single parent with five children, the youngest being seven months old. But I remember after going to bed at night, hearing my father praying, Every night, he didn't stop praying. Single parent, single father, walking through the night, through the darkness, 
He never stopped praying. So we're not going to stop. Even when the night comes, tell the world, even in the darkness, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because the Lord is. You can stop right there and tell everybody the Lord is. Pharaoh was, but God is. Hitler was, but God is. Mussolini was, but God is. Napoleon was, but God is. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Never give up the light, even in a dark world. Hallelujah and praise God. Oh, come on, stand on your feet and give God a great big hand praise for 89-year-old Reverend Dr. Otis Moss, Jr. Just, just turn to your light. Just turn to your neighbor and just flicker a little bit. Come on, quiet. Just flicker a little bit and say, he's my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? As you bow your heads in the word of thanks to God, as you've heard, even tonight. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, you need that light. Dr. Moss made it very plain. As much light as you think you've got today, you're going to move into darkness. But even in darkness, there can be light as long as you have the light of God in your life. As you bow your heads, pray for Dr. Otis Moss Jr. and Mrs. Moss that God will continue giving them the strength to preach powerful sermons as he has done today. Would you put your hand also on the person's shoulder in front of you? I want you to just pray for them and connect. You never know what they're going through. Person before you, on the side of you, everybody ought to have a hand on somebody's shoulder, right or left. And they need your prayers right now. You might be in light right now. But Dr. Moss made it very clear that something is going to appear as darkness in your life. And you want to make sure that it will be light in God's life eyesight and in your own experience. Yea, though I walk through the valley called shadow of death, I won't feel no evil because my light will be with me, called the shepherd. It might become a health issue. It's already a political issue. It's already a national issue. It's already a world issue. But even in the midst of it, God is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. If you're here today and you don't You've never been baptized. Would you just lift your other hand up and somebody got their hand on your shoulder if you've never been baptized? Lift it up real high. You've never been baptized or you don't have a church home or you're looking for a church family to unite with. We just want to connect with you. If you're here today, you've never connected with us through Facebook, emails, Facebook, social media, YouTube. Lift your hand up if you don't have a connection with us because all we're interested in is a connection with us. Because all we want to do is help you to forge your relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I've been at nighttime in my life. And the only thing I wanted to hear was from Jesus Christ. And when I heard from Jesus, he made things all right for me. And he can do the same thing for you, but you cannot disavow him. You've got to acknowledge him. He said, if you will acknowledge, acknowledge me before mankind, I will acknowledge you before my father. If you're here today, we're going to do an open invitation real quick. All I want you to do is run up here, and I feel that there's at least five to ten people in the church that you need to come. You've been thinking about it. Dr. Moss has made it very clear to you. This is the light and the right place to come to. If you're here today, will you come up? Is there one? Man, woman, boy, girl. Will you come? Will you come? Man, woman. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. 
Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Come on, give God some praise. Come on down, come on down, come on down. If you're here today, come on down, come on down. Come on down, come on down. Don't be afraid. Is there one? Come on down, come on down, come on down. Come on down. I feel a spirit of apprehension. Amen. If you're here today, I'll tell you what. Make sure you don't go out that door without filling out one of those connect cards in front of your uh, pew rack. And I want you to give it to an usher as you're going out. Now, second thing I want you to do, how many of y'all love Reverend Dr. Otis Moss Jr.? Is that how y'all feel about me? Huh? Wow, that's just terrible. How many of y'all love? Oh, here comes one. Praise God. I got to stay open the door to the church. Come on down while I'm talking. There's somebody else you want to come. Come on down. Is there another person? Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I'm not going to rush you out. Come on down. There's some, ask the person next to you, do you want me to walk up there with you? Because God just told me there are some young people that also need to come like this young person. If you're here today, come on down. Just ask the person next to you. Say, are you a member of the church? Are you connected with the church? Come on down. Ask them, have you been baptized? Ask the person next to you. Don't assume they have. Here comes some more. Praise God. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. We're not going to rush you. Come on down. Come on down. There's some. There's five people in here right now. God is saying to you, come on down. You've been holding off. You've been waiting, but you need to come. Come. That's it. Come on down. Come on down. Don't be afraid. Come on, walk. There you go. Come on down. Come on down. That's right. You can walk with them if you want to. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. There's some others who are coming. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. God is saying, this is your time. This is your day. You don't have to wait. Come on down. Come on down. Is there another? Is there another? There's someone else who need to come. Yes, I got four. I need five. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. There's two more. Amen. Is there another? Come on down. Come on down. God is speaking to you right now. Come on down. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come on. Give God some praise. We can praise him, man. We're not late. Ain't no game coming on right now, right? We ain't worried about that. We worried about these is what the heavens are shouting about. Angels are shouting right now in heaven. God is shouting. He's happy. Loved ones are in heaven. Say, look down there over the balcony of time and look at my granddaughters and my child that come. Is there one more here? Come on, come on, two more. Come on down, 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 come on down. That's it. Come on down. There you go. Come on down. There you go. Come on down, sis. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on. God saying there's somebody else out there. Come on down. Don't be afraid. You don't have to worry. Come on down. Come on down. You need to settle the issue right now. Darkness is coming. Darkness is coming, but you can have light in the midst of darkness. Don't say no to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Don't worry about who's beside you. The moment you start to walk in, it gets easier and easier. There's somebody else out there. Are you going to come? Come on down. Maybe there's a kid that want to be baptized. I don't know. But your God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. Come on down. Come on. Is there another? I don't want to beg you in. I want you to walk on down. Come on down. There you go. Come on down. Come on down. There you go. And the child shall lead the way. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. This is your day. You may not feel like this next week, but you're feeling it right now. You're inspired right now. God is telling you to go on down. Satan is saying, no, don't go down. God is saying, go on down there. The day that you hear my voice, heart not your heart, say yes to the Lord. And when you say yes to the Lord, the Lord will say yes to you. Is there one more person here? One more person, one more person, one more person. Come on down. Let's give a, a great big praise for these who have come down. Praise God for all of you. What's your name, dear? Zaria. Aria? Zaria. Zaria, we're glad to have you. You believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you said that? Praise God. How about you? What's your name? Shandria. Shandria? Shandria. Shandria. And who is this young fella, girl? This little young girl, what's her name? Tyler. God, I'm praying for this, your daughter, and I'm praying for this, your daughter, and I'm praying for this little Tyler. Hey, baby girl, how you doing? You looking at the pastor? You gonna be all right, because I'm gonna bless you, and I'm gonna get you into the, the real light. What's your name, baby girl? Dolly. Amen. You believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, yes. And what's your name? Danielle. Danielle, we're glad to have you. Karen. Karen, praise God. Angela. 
Angela. I want you to bow your heads right now real quick. Everyone bow your heads. I want you to pray for these who have come, and I even see a little baby here, a new infant. I want you to pray for them going into the light. And I want you all to pray with me and say these words. If you really believe it, you are in relationship with God. And I, I declare to you, these folk are going to be walking in the light, even in the midst of dark path, pathways, like all of us. Would you, would you repeat that for me? Say, dear God, dear God, thank you for the relationship, for loving me so much so that you came down for me in the form of Jesus. I just want a relationship with you through Jesus Christ who died on the cross for my sins. Now, God, I cast all of my cares in your hands because you care for me through your death, burial, and resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen, I pray. Give God a great big hand, praise. Now, I want you all to just turn and follow that lady right there this lady right here and she's gonna escort you out amen amen didn't we have a good time y'all i feel better so much better since i laid my burden come on sing with me y'all i feel better i feel better so much better so much better some ugly friends but friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid, since I laid my burden down, burden down. this for you don't Dr. Treat me friends don't treat me like they used to y'all want to dance with me I want to relieve you one last time with one other thing. Dr. Moss is still going all around the country, and uh, we give him an offering, but I want you to give him a special offering from you. Hello, somebody. If you got an extra dollar, $10, or $100, are you going to want to write a check to Dr. Moss, or even you can use your credit card with the uh, envelope system that you have there. Can y'all just sit down for one minute and write that check out to Dr. Moss? I want to invest in him. I want Dr. Moss to go all over the country and never again have to worry about anything. Amen? Say amen. So we're going to raise a second offering today. We haven't done that in 100,000 years. Uh, but I want you to put it in your, in your hands. Amen. Everybody got it in their hand? Amen. Lift up your hand if you have an offering there. All right, that's good. Eternal God, our Father, we ask that you would bless this offering as we raise it for Dr. Otis Moss, Jr. God, we're praying that you will give him extended life. Give him the time that you gave to Noah along with his lovely wife, Mrs. Moss. Give them 120 years. Somebody ought to agree with that. Somebody ought to agree with that. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Offering praise on the far end and the sick. You may stand up. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can lay that burden down now. Consider yourself dismissed. Consider yourself dismissed.